Welcome to Kingston Springs United Methodist Church. We are so glad you are worshiping with us today. The order of worship for today's service can be found on our church Facebook page. It has the hymn lyrics in it, so you can sing along with us today if you would like to. Just one announcement as we um, get started this morning. Our fuel bag ministry will resume this week. Up until this point, the ARC has been providing fuel bags for kids at school and the churches will resume our part in that ministry beginning this week. So um, Jack Arnold is um, buying the snacks for those bags and putting those together. So if you would like to contribute money toward that ministry, you can mark on your check or on your online giving, mark Fuel Ministry, and those funds will go to help um, provide snacks for children at need, in need at Kingston Springs Elementary School. We are continuing our sermon series this week, which we began last Sunday. And in this series, it's called Community in Crisis. And we are exploring the ways that God is forming the people of Israel into a community as they experience crisis when they leave slavery in Egypt and journey into the wilderness. And so we were exploring how God is continuing to form us into a community even now as we experience our current crisis of this pandemic. So we hope that you will join us over the next several weeks for this sermon series. We will receive Holy Communion later in the service, so you will want to have a piece of bread or a cracker and juice or water ready for that. And as always, we will light our candle together. So if you have a candle at home, you can light yours as I light mine. My candle's getting kind of low. I don't know if your candle is getting low. But this candle represents Christ's presence with us. As we worship with this candle lit, it reminds us that God is always with us. Wherever we are, wherever we worship, God is with us. When it is rainy on a rainy day, like it is today, God is with us as we are worshiping from home. God is always with us, making whatever space we're in holy space. So I invite you to settle into God's presence today. Take a few breaths, center yourself, and open yourself to what God would have for us today. And now we will join together in the call to worship and your responses will be printed on your screen. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know you put their trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare God's deeds among the peoples. God does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to us, O Lord. You are the one who lifts us up so that we may recount all your praises and rejoice in your deliverance. Let us continue to worship as Julia leads us in the hymn, Mary, Don't You Weep. Turn it 
As we move into a time of prayer, if you have a joy and concern that you would like to share with us and you are worshiping with us on Facebook Live, you can share your joy and concern by typing in the comment section and our church will celebrate with you over your good news and we will pray with you over your prayer concerns. There are a few things to lift up today. One is a joy that I have is working with Julia Rich, our music director. I am so thankful for her leadership. Um, she, every week she coordinates the music for our worship service and she coordinates musicians to play and sing. And I am just very grateful for her partnership as we plan and lead worship together. A concern, um, that we need to lift up in prayer is Neil Maynard's family upon the death of his cousin recently. So we need to remember them as they are mourning. Remember Helene, um, she has been diagnosed with colon cancer. She will have surgery next week to remove that tumor. So we need to remember her as she's preparing for that surgery and also remember her husband, Tom. He has been in the hospital the last couple of days. So we need to pray for um, him as well. Also remember Jack Arnold in your prayers, his friend, Denny, who has been on our prayer list for several weeks now. Um, he passed away last week from complications from COVID, so please remember um, Jack and his friend Denny's family. If you have any prayer concerns that you would like to be added to our church prayer list, please email me those and I will add them to our prayer list. I send that out in our church e-news every week, so um, if you would like to be added to our church email list, please let me know that as well. As we pray today, I will lead us in lifting up particular situations and people. And at the end of each section of our prayer, I will leave a few moments of silence for you to pray at home. And then I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and we will all respond, hear our prayer. So let us pray. God of mercy and grace, we thank you for the good gifts in our lives. We thank you for the beauty of your creation, for family and friends, for the breath in our lungs, for the rain, for the way that you provide and care, for the love and support we receive from this community of faith. As we are mindful of the good gifts of your love and forgiveness, we are also mindful of the ways that we have not shown love and forgiveness to others. We confess that we have failed to love you with our whole lives. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We ask for reconciliation and forgiveness in our own lives as we lift up our prayers of confession. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May all those who confess your name be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We lift up prayers for our church, that we may be the hands and feet of Jesus in our world.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We lift up prayers for our nation and its leaders, that they might seek the path of peace, justice, and well-being for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. We lift up prayers for your creation in our stewardship of it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those whose lives are closely linked with ours. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. We lift up prayers for our family, friends, co-workers, and neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We lift up those who are sick with COVID-19, those who are in the hospital, those around the world who are in quarantine, those separated from their loved ones, those who have lost their source of income, and those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. We pray especially for those on the West Coast who have been affected by the wildfires, those who have lost their homes, those who have had to flee for their lives, those who have lost loved ones in the fires. We also Lift up those who are still recovering from the hurricane in Louisiana and Texas and Arkansas. Give all these, your children, courage and hope in their struggles. Bring them assurance of your presence with them and empower us to do what we can to help. We lift up prayers for those who are suffering today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now that we have confessed our need of forgiveness in the beginning of our prayer, hear God's pardon today. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. It's now time for our children's message, so we invite all the kids out there to gather around your screen for our story time together. So last week, we heard the story of how the Israelites were slaves in Egypt under Pharaoh's control and how God rescued them from Egypt during the Passover event where they had to leave their homes very quickly during the night. Well, our story for today picks up where we left off last week. The Israelites have left Egypt.
during the night, Pharaoh has gone with his army to chase after them. So the Israelites are on the run from Pharaoh and his army, and the Israelites come to the Red Sea. This is a huge body of water, and they're stuck. There's nowhere to go. They don't have boats to go across it. They can't swim across it because um, it's just too big, it's too large. And so they are stopped there at the sea with the Pharaoh's army coming closer and they are scared and they are panicking and they are crying out, what are, you know, what are we gonna do? And so God tells Moses to stretch out his staff over the sea so Moses does that, and when he does that, a wind, God sends a wind to push back the waters, and there is a path that appears in on the ground. There's dry ground for the Israelites to walk on through the sea. So there is a wall of water on their right and a wall of water on their left. Can you imagine what that might look like to have these huge walls of water that are not caving in on you? The Israelites walk through these two big walls of water on dry ground and they cross the Red Sea and they get to the other side. And then they look back and they see Pharaoh and his army chasing them. They come on the dry path as well. And the Israelites are scared. They think that Pharaoh and his army are gonna come get them on the other side of the sea. But then God stops the wind from pushing back the water and the, wa the walls of water crash in on Pharaoh and his army and sweep them away. So the Israelites are freed from Pharaoh and his army. God has freed them, has delivered them. That's what a word we use. God has delivered them, God has freed them from Pharaoh and his army, and they don't have to be afraid of them anymore. So whenever we face a big obstacle in our way, like the Israelites did with the sea, and we don't think there's any way through it, maybe we're just having a really bad day, or we have to do this really hard thing, like apologize to someone, um, and we just don't think we can do it, it just seems too big or someone is being mean to us and we just don't know what we're gonna do, how we're gonna make it through. God is there with us, providing a way through so that we can make it through whatever we are facing. So we're gonna sing a fun song today. It's called Pharaoh, Pharaoh. All right, you ready? Pharaoh, Pharaoh, oh baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Oh, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. One more time. All right, you ready? Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Oh, baby, let my people go. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so we're gonna pray now and I invite you to repeat after me if you would like to. Dear God, thank you for always being with us. Help us to remember that whatever hard thing we are facing, you are there to help us make it through. Amen. Hear the scripture reading from Exodus 14 verses 19 through 31. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea the Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. 
The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord and the pillar of fire and the cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into a panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at the dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers, the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians, so the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us today. Breathe on us the breath of life. Amen. There was a time in my life actually not too long ago, when I found myself running. Now, I wasn't physically running because I don't really run, but I was running from something in my past and I didn't even realize that I had been running. When I was a child, I experienced a few hurtful and unsafe situations. For decades, I tried to forget all about it and try to move forward in my life with my past hidden safely behind me. But about five years ago, I finally came to the point where I realized that my past was not safely hidden behind me like I thought. This realization came to me in an interaction with my daughter, Tessa. She was about two and a half years old at the time. And I remember having a lot of anxiety around following the parenting rules. You know, all those parenting rules that you read online that say your kids should have at least five servings of veggies and fruit a day. They should be asleep by 8 p.m. every night. They should get no more than one hour of screen time daily and the list goes on. Now these are all really good rules, but I was frantically trying to follow them to a T. And it was more than just the typical first time parent anxiety. Screen time was a particular one that I latched onto. I hardly ever let Tessa watch TV. And when she did, I had this inner angst weighing on me the whole time as I was thinking, she's getting 15 minutes of screen time. It's going to ruin her social and verbal development and her brain is going to turn into mush. These 15 minutes of screen time will permanently stunt her development. One time when my mom had been keeping her I came home to find Tessa watching a harmless children's TV show. I could hear the TV as I walked up the stairs of our garage and I walked into our house with all the anxiety and fury of a hornet who's had her nest mess with. After I angrily stormed into the room demanding to know how long she'd been watching TV, I stopped and noticed my daughter's face. 
and it was a face of fear and terror. And she said, with tears in her eyes, Mommy, please don't make me turn it off. That was a moment for me where I realized that the past that I had been running from for so long was not safely behind me like I thought. I realized that I was parenting my child out of fear that was linked to the unsafe situations that I experienced as a child. I had become obsessed with creating a safe and pain-free environment for her by doggedly and oppressively trying to follow all the parenting rules. My past had caught up with me and was chasing me into the future. It was affecting my relationship with my daughter and my family. Fear and hurt from the past was chasing me and in turn unintentionally creating fear in my daughter towards me. And all I could see in front of me was a huge obstacle of not knowing how to parent her any differently and not seeing any future without the power of my past controlling me. That moment with Tessa around the TV was a Red Sea moment. The Israelite people experienced a Red Sea moment, literally. They have spent hundreds of years as slaves in Egypt under Pharaoh's control. In response to their cries for deliverance, God raises up Moses to lead them out of Egypt, which God does through miraculous plagues. And as we heard last night, that in, last week, that included the Passover event when the Israelites quickly left their homes in Egypt. But shortly after Moses and the Israelites leave Pharaoh's grip, Pharaoh sends his army to bring them back. The Israelites thought they were free, free from Pharaoh, but they aren't yet. And now we find the Israelite people in, in the wilderness on the run. They are running from the massive army of Pharaoh who has fast chariots, strong horses, deadly weapons, and a lot of vengeance. The Israelites are running for their lives and they come to the Red Sea, this huge body of water that stretches out as far as they can see. There is no way around it, no way over it, and no way under it. They are stuck with their past chasing them and their future blocked. There's nowhere left for them to run. In the verses right before our text for today, we read that the Israelites come to the Red Sea, look back, see the Egyptians advancing on them and cry out in fear to Moses saying, what have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. I can hear the desperation in their voice as they are frantically running from a past that has defined them as slaves. And while there is a longing to be free from this past, there is also fear because they thought they were already free from it when God led them out during the Passover. But they aren't free yet. Their past is still chasing them into their future, threatening to control them for the rest of their lives. And as they realize that their past is catching up with them, there is a moment of panic. Their trust in God is hanging by a thread and they are ready to give up and give in to Pharaoh's control. In this Red Sea moment in the wilderness, 
where their past and future is closing in on them. Everything seems shaky and uncertain. There may be some of us today who find ourselves in a Red Sea moment like the Israelites. We may find ourselves running from something that is threatening to overpower and control us. Maybe we're running from something that we thought was safely in our past, but is now chasing us into the future. Maybe it's a past mistake that is still a source of deep pain and the chains of shame and regret still haunt us. Maybe it's an addiction that is still chasing us, threatening to dominate our lives and destroy our future. Maybe we've endured a tragic loss that has us frozen in grief and we are unable to move forward in life. Maybe we've experienced deep hurt in our past that is harmfully affecting the way we relate to others in the present and is blocking our vision of how our future could look any different. Maybe we are being chased by an idea of success that enslaves us to a system of comparison and competition to be the best, own the perfect house, look the most beautiful, make the most money, and hold the most power. Or maybe we are being chased by a pandemic that has altered our way of life for several months now and is blocking our vision of the future looking any differently. Much like the Israelites, we find ourselves stuck in a Red Sea moment in various times in our lives, with our past possessively closing in on us and our future blocked by an insurmountable obstacle. But in their Red Sea moment, the Israelites receive a promise. In the verses before our text for today, they receive the promise that God will deliver them. God will fight for them. And God gives them some instructions. First, they are told to be still, to stop running long enough to face their past and to open their eyes and ears to the work that God has done and is doing to free them. When they stop and look back at their past, they will see overwhelming pain and suffering, but they will also see the redemptive work of God in their past. Having stopped and looked back at their past, they are also to, told to go forward into the sea. As they go forward into the sea, they go now with the awareness that the God who was with them in their past is the God who is with them in their present, creating a future with them and for them. God is creating and forming them to be a people, a community with a hopeful future, despite their painful past and their present circumstances that seem hopeless. God is at work in the present circumstances to complete the deliverance that God began in the past. When the Israelites come to this huge body of water blocking their way, God pushes the waters and opens up a path by holding back the waters for the Israelites to walk through on dry ground. God makes a way forward when the Israelites can't. And the visible symbols of God's presence, the pillar of fire and cloud, go with them into the sea. The pillar of cloud, which originally is in front of them, moves 
behind them, separating them from the Egyptian army. So not only does God make a way forward for them, God comes behind them, between the Israelites and the power that seeks to destroy and dominate them. The Israelites are surrounded by God's presence and God's deliverance. When I experienced my Red Sea moment with my daughter, I realized that in order to be truly free from the power of my past, I had to stop running. I needed to stand still long enough to face my past so that I could really be free from it. For me, this meant going to counseling and beginning a daily meditation practice. It also meant talking to some of my close family members and friends about my past. These tools help me to be still long enough to really face my past and become aware of how God was at work both in my past and in my present to free me. I began to see and experience many small moments and some really big moments of freedom. And I gained glimmers of hope for how to parent my daughter differently in the future. A future that was rooted in faith instead of fear. I experienced a kind of deliverance that I never thought was possible. Now, my deliverance didn't happen overnight, and it really didn't happen overnight for the Israelites either, even though it seems that way because they crossed the Red Sea in one night. Their deliverance story actually began long before they stopped at the Red Sea. It began with five women who played a part in Moses' birth and protecting him as a child. Then it continued on as Moses grew up and challenged Pharaoh. Their deliverance story began long before they crossed the Red Sea, and it will continue long after God leads them through it. As we will see in the next couple of weeks, they will continue to need deliverance from the power of their past as they are tempted again and again to fall back into fear throughout their journey into the wilderness. My deliverance story didn't begin when I stopped running and it didn't end when I was ready to taper off my weekly counseling sessions. My deliverance story is still happening now because every day, every day, God is still at work continuing to deliver me from the power of past hurt and pain that still sometimes surfaces. Every day, God is showing me how God is still freeing me from the power of my past. In our deliverance story, when we find ourselves in a Red Sea moment in the wilderness, running from all that is chasing us into our future. May we stand still long enough to realize that God is more powerful than our oppressive past. God is more powerful than Pharaoh. God is more powerful than our present obstacles. God is more powerful than the sea. God can make a way for us to walk into our future as people, as a people, with the presence of God going before us and behind us. As we go into the sea, our God goes with us and defeats the powers that have been chasing us. As we go into the sea, our God goes with us, 
holding back the waters that previously posed a, an obstacle to our future. As we go into the sea, we can move forward, trusting that God is at work right now to deliver us and all of creation from the powers that seek to dominate and destroy. As we go into the sea, our God goes with us, creating us into a community of hope with a new future of freedom. Instead of running in fear, may we walk in faith, trusting that the God who was at work to deliver us in the past is the same God who is working right now to deliver us in the present. I'm not sure what your deliverance story is or how long it's been going on. But I'm going to invite you to take some time right now to be still, to stand still and reflect on what have you been running from? What have you been running from? Are you ready to stop running and walk forward, trusting that God, our deliverer, has been and will be with you? Now we have the opportunity to respond to God's gift of grace by the giving of our tithes and offerings. This is an act of worship where we recognize that all that we have and all that we are is a gift from God and we are merely stewards of these gifts. You can send a check in the mail to our church at 368 North Main Street, Kingston Springs, 37082, or you can give online at ksumc.churchcenter.com slash giving. And if you would like to give to our fuel ministry above your regular tithes and offerings, be sure to mark on a check or on your online giving, mark it as fuel ministry so that it will go to that ministry. I will pray over the offering and then we will continue to worship as Karen and her brother lead us in the song, Red Sea Road. Let us pray. Giving God, all we are and all we have come from you. We offer back to you what has always been yours. As you have entrusted your gifts to us, so we return these gifts to you, trusting that you will multiply them to the great glory of your kingdom on earth. We pray this through Jesus our Lord, who gave his life for us and for the world. Amen. Dreams, make them deep into the earth behind us. Set our goodbyes at the grave, but everything reminds us God knows we ache when He asks us. Dry, 
but the ocean they consume and we're scared to follow you so we'll sing to our souls we will bury our home where he leads us to go there's a red sea road when we can And we will sing to our souls. We will bury our hope down the Red Sea Road when we can. down a red sea road. It's now time for Holy Communion, so you will want to have your bread or cracker and water and or juice available. And I invite you to join with me in the liturgy for communion and your responses will be printed on the screen. Though physically separated from one another, we are still bound together as family through God's Spirit. As members of the household of God, we now join together virtually, yet still present to one another as we gather from across the miles. This presence is marked by our shared praises and prayers, our shared hearing and affirming of God's Word, and now our shared eating. The peace and presence of the Lord be with us, so we lift up our hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, because it is the right thing to do, not only now, but always. Day after day after day. We thank you, Creator God, that you made us in your image and breathe into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failing, and our bodies diseased, you reached out to us again and again, providing healing, wholeness, and new life. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided safety. When evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love remained steadfast. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is your son who came to preach good news to the poor, release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. He freed the oppressed and announced that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. He is healing the sick now. He will heal the sick day after day after day. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. 
This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let us be a community of healer and hope givers as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Let them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, made whole by his witness, passion, and life. In this season of social distancing, may you remind us that we are never spiritually distant from you or from each other. We belong to your body. May the Spirit use us to heal and reconcile in Jesus' name. And now, Holy Spirit, make us one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And everyone says, Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This bread reminds us that any life, no matter how broken or sick or distorted it may become, can be made whole again. This cup reminds us that any life, no matter how empty or lonely or isolated it may become, can be filled again. These are the gifts of God for everyone who wants to receive God's grace. And everyone says, thanks be to God. And now I invite you to receive communion by whatever means that you have. Let us pray. Day after day after day, you give yourself to us and two or three gather in your name in connection across the miles and in bread and wine. As we go from this gathering around your table, may we feel restored to your body, companioned by your people and sustained by the power of your spirit as we witness to your healing and reconciling work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now you can either finish eating and drinking your communion elements, or you can pour them out outside and give them back to God's creation. As you go into the sea, walk forward knowing that God, our Deliverer, goes before you and behind you, surrounding you with the presence of God. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. <laughs>